tribulation, the word translated as tribulation, comes from the Hebrew word sar or sara. In the Greek word philippus, philipsis. The basic sense of these words include trouble, hardship, suffering, affliction, distress, and pressure. <sighs> it is used to refer of any kind of hardship or troubles people of God may experience. The root Hebrew term means narrow or compressed. As such, it conveys the idea of a severe constriction, narrowing, or pressing together to the point of crushing. The English word tribulation comes from the Latin word tribulum, which means a threshing sledge, which uses pressure and friction to separate chaff from heads of grain. Every instance of the term ellipsis in the book of Revelations connotes trouble, distress, affliction, and tribulation experienced by believers. It is also frequently used throughout the New Testament in conjunction with suffering because of one's faith. Jesus even tells his disciples, in the world you will have tribulation, but take heart, I have overcome the world. Therefore, tribulation and trials are common experience of believers in this life, and they should not be surprised or alarmed by them, because God uses them to sanctify his people.
God of Force is inseparable from the re and the chaff. We will honor this God. Thus shall he do in the most stronghold with a strange God. Yeah, he will honor this. He shall honor the God of forces so that he can get gold, silver, and pleasant things. Where is that way right? No little part. No the king shall do according to his will. To his pleasure. As he shall do in the most stronghold of the strange God, who see he, whom he shall acknowledge and increase with glory. And he shall cause them to rule over many. He shall divide the land for gain. And at that time, and at that time of the end, shall the king of the south push at him, and the king of the north shall come against him like a whirlwind with chariots and with horsemen. And with many ships, and he shall enter into the country, and shall overflow and pass over. He shall enter also the glorious land, and many countries shall be overthrown. But these shall escape out of his hand, even Edom and Moab, and the chief children of Ammon. He shall stretch forth his hand also upon the countries, and the land of Egypt shall not escape. But he shall have power over the treasuries of gold and of silver and over all precious things of Egypt. And the Libyans and the Ethiopians shall be at his steps. But tidings out of the east and out of the north shall trouble him. Therefore he shall go forth with great fury to destroy. To destroy. And utterly to make away many. And he shall plant the tabernacle of his palace between the seas. In the glorious holy mountain, yet he shall come to his end and the men shall call to him. Seas. The glorious holy mountain, and yet she had come to his end. At that time, Michael shall Michael stand up the great pitch, which standeth for the children of thy people. There shall be a time of trouble such as never was since there was a nation, even to that same time. And at that time, thy people shall be delivered. Every one that shall be found written in the book, and many of them that sleep in the dust of the earth shall wake, some to everlasting life, some to everlasting shame and contempt. And they that be wise shall shine as the brightness of the firmament, and they that turn into righteousness as the stars forever. And ever. Thou, O Daniel, shut up the words. Another parable he put forth unto them, saying, The kingdom of heaven is likened unto a man <coughs> which sowed good seed in his field which sowed good seed in his field.
while men slept, his enemy came and sowed tares among the wheat and went his way. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. The English word tribulation comes from the Latin word tribula, meaning a dressing sledge, which uses pressure and friction to separate the chaff from the heads of grain. So he's the Antichrist is playing his part, even though he has a will of his own. Oh, how overcome he is. But when the blade was sprung up and brought forth fruit, then appeared the tares also. So the servant of the householder came and said unto him, Sir, didst not thou sow good seed in thy field? From whence then hath it tares? He said unto them, an enemy hath done this. The servants said unto him, Wilt thou then that we go and gather them up? But he said, Nay, lest while ye gather up the tares, ye root up also the wheat with them. Let both grow together until the harvest and in the time in the time of harvest I will say to the reapers gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles to burn them but I will gather the wheat into my barn. Another parable we put forth saying, The kingdom of heaven is like an unto a man who sowed good seed in his field. While men slept, the enemy came and sowed tares. And the blade was sprung up by forth fruit. Servants of the householder came and said unto him, Good seeds in my field. Good seeds in my field. So now we know that there is evil and good in the kingdom of heaven. The kingdom of heaven is like in this. So now they know there is good and evil. He said unto them, The enemy have done this. The servant said unto him, Wilt thou then go and gather them up? He said, No. He said, No. Lest while you gather up the tares, you root up the wheat also. Because we let both grow together until the knowledge of both is fulfilled within the kingdom which is inside man
Neither shall ye say, Lo here, lo there, before the kingdom of God is within you. Okay, so Fisher found some trace in the sea tree, right? It turns out to be a metal so we're learning what is right and what is wrong so I'm correct about that so that when we dwell in the kingdom of heaven we will know what is always right and how to always do what is right yet still knowing what is wrong and being perfected completely is our new way in the creation that we were created to be in through Jesus Christ which means we are indeed a completely new creature. And for anyone in Christ is a new creation. The old has passed away. Has passed away. Behold, all things have become new. Therefore, if any man be in Christ as a new creature, old things passed away. passed away. Gather ye together first the tares and bind them in bundles and burn them. But gather the wheat into my barn, because God is a consuming fire. Burn them. Old things are passed away. Behold, all things have become new. All things have become new because we know what is right and what is wrong and to do what is right is to abide in the completed work which is Jesus Christ. As we go and identify that with the rebuking of Peter because Peter was rebuked because he had ambitions to go against the will of God which is the Antichrist spirit operating so he was rebuked as Satan while Christ was to do exactly what he was supposed to do he was sent to do his father's will so that was an example of rooting them up together and of not rooting them up together so that they so that they could actually end up dwelling in the kingdom of heaven, knowing, knowing what is right and what is wrong. And all things are of God, who hath reconciled us to him by Jesus Christ, and have given us the ministry of reconciliation. So the God of forces, reason, such strong magnetism pushing away from certain things and the charging of and the charging. It's the It's the triple. It's the same thing. 
That's what tribulation is. Tribulation is tribulation. Seven years of tribulation. Seven tribulation is tribulation. Antichrist has been many. He shall set up. He shall do wickedly against the covenant. He shall corrupt by flatteries. People that do know their God shall be strong and do exploits. He shall corrupt by flatteries. Easily, the people that don't dwell or rest in God's art be completed in work. And we do exploits because of this. Because we already dwell in the completed work. Wow. He is still working, always at an unrest, according to Revelations 14. And he gets cast in the fire. So the forces, it's just God's will being done. It's a falling away. It's the falling away. It's the falling away. The poseth, exalteth himself above all that is called God or that is worshipped, so that he, as God said, is in the temple of God. We are the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. Remember ye not that when I was with you, I told you these things. Absolutely. Absolutely did. Right there. Damn. And now you must, and now you. No, he told it that he might be revealed in his time. For the mystery of iniquity doth already work. He who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. He who now let it will let until he be taken out of the way. And then shall the wicked be revealed, whom the Lord shall consume with the spirit of his mouth. And shall be destroyed at the brightness of his coming. Whose coming is after the working of Satan. As it was explained in the wheat and the tares. All power signs and lying wonders. So the forces that are coming and pressing and moving things around in different ways. Is just it's prophecy fulfilled is what it is um, the forces that people carry within them it's, it's like when um, Jesus Christ just rebukes uh, Peter for for Satan and he rebuked him he told him he rebuked him that's what rebuking is it's Get behind, get thee behind me, Satan. You literally said that for that is what it is. Satan is always underneath the power and authority of God, as he displayed when he was speaking with Eve, and she, he said to her, In the day ye eat thereof. All deceivableness of unrighteousness and that perish. So God really is taking care of his people. See, he honors this Antichrist figure here in Daniel, honors 
the god of forces so that he can get his gains. He can get his money, his gold, his silver, his precious stones and stuff like that. Because he has a will of his own that goes against the will of God, which is his damnation. Which is the son of perdition that is spoken about, which is a spirit. It's a spirit that controls the people who don't dwell in the completed work and believe that it's already completed. And knowing what salvation is. So what it does is it, it, but it's not a bad thing. This, this force isn't a bad thing. It just separates. But he honors that because he wants to do his own thing. It separates them from the power of God that is in in us so that they don't have to have they're not completely terrified is what it is that's what this does so that they can continue on their already prophesied path regardless if they want to they don't believe or dwell in that they have a will of their own for the gains and ambitions of their heart but they are set in this way for the glory of God and who he is he set up his kingdom the beast kingdom these are they who receive that mark for they buy and sell they buy and sell and he that has the mark of the number of the beast the name the whole thing here here is he that has wisdom count the number of the beast where it is 666 because so man is 666 because 777 is completion it is rest it is the already completed work finalized in Jesus Christ as he said it is finished and as he said I must go to the cross and he looked at Peter and he said get thee behind me Satan I must do what I came to do and this is how Satan operates operates out of the presence out of the will of God yet still in the truth of it all making manifest what is right and wrong in the new man who is created through Jesus Christ so that we can dwell in the kingdom of God, being absolutely perfect in our ways. Knowing good and bad, and always doing that which is best for the kingdom. Having no darkness, for God is light. That's what it is. It's the force is not a bad thing. It's the separating All it is is just it's explained right there. I don't remember what that was. But we already read it. I think it was actually right here. No, that wasn't it. Was this it? No, this wasn't it. Ah, the tribulation. Tribulation is tribulation. What's that? 
Whoa. God bless. Um, just did a little quick Bible study. I know I was really quiet. It's kind of just for myself. Um, but if you want to check it out, you're more than welcome. You might need some headphones because I was whispering a little bit and just reading a little bit. Um, if you enjoy it, give it a like. Um, it was basically it was basically just about um, forces because I'm feeling like you know forces like magnetism. Magnetism is a real thing. Like there's something things sometimes. When you become a more more aware of who you are in Christ, you realize that um, you're being pushed certain directions. And in the beginning, it was really really aggravating. You know, I wanted to just uh, you know just fight it. You know, like it said in Daniel, like how how the kings come against. Uh, I think it was the king of the south comes against him, and then how it said. King of the North came against him as well. And um, basically there was just, it was just a war. You know what I'm saying? But in Christ it's peace because I, I've been led to be able to identify that it's all just, it's just prophecy being fulfilled. Uh, when you're pushed in a certain direction by, by force which is God's will so that you know what is right and what is wrong as you enter into it, as you enter into the kingdom of heaven always doing what is right um, so basically this antichrist it has its it has a will it's of, of its own and it and it honors this force because it helps it avoid um, you know the presence of God so that he can do what he wants to do and what this force does is, is it also, it's the reaper it, or, you know, the altogether of the reapers, you know, because it separates the wheat from the, tra the chaff. Um, so, so it puts them over there on their side and they're just, they're just being burnt up. And, you know, they get their gains and everything. They have their rewards for, you know, whatever will that they possess. You know, just basically coveting and all the other stuff. You know, coveting the things of this world that ultimately perish. I guess you could call it a, a, a death will. <laughs> a death will. Um, and like a life will. But theirs is a death will. That's why we're pushed away from certain things. Um, you know, if... if, if if you like walk in a busy city, like you can feel pressure sometimes, like from people, you can just feel their energy, like that's somebody you should definitely avoid. But like, I was having problems with that because you know I wanted to challenge it because I know who I am because I felt like I knew who I was. You know what I'm saying? Like, and I know what energy is, and um, it just it wasn't something. It's not something that needs to be fought. You know, I'm coming to that realization now. I've always said like I like who I am you know I think I'm really intelligent in the word and everything but it's like I'm still learning here too I'm only 35 years old you know like, it's about peace it's about you know being thankful for everything you know I wouldn't be able to say that I now understand this if I wasn't if I hadn't gone through that you know but you don't have to fight that you know that's what I'm telling myself is like you don't have to fight against this force that's separating the wheat from the chaff because that's what it's doing that's all it's doing um, and it's just allowing us to know that we dwell in the kingdom of God knowing what is you know what is um, the bad energy and what is the good energy you know and the way we want to go you know, after we pass on because there's ener energy just doesn't go away it's it's a constant thing it's energy can't can't just you know go away it, it has to be how it is i guess you could say god is energy you know he's just allowing us to um the word of god which is the vibratory frequency which is energy and forces being pushed around he's just letting us know um this is how god speaks to people you know he's letting us know what is and what isn't best for you 
and to continue down the path that he has you on, which is abiding in his truth. And um, whether you understand it or not, knowing what that he has what's best for you, and you accepting that and walking in that, he will gladly show you if you ask him what is going on. Because I've done this, and he just completely revealed it to me. It's like right here. It's amazing. It's just a testimony of that. Like, um, yeah, I think it's really darn cool. Um, how it brought all that together. I mean, we had the wheat and the tares. We had Daniel <coughs> with the. Uh, God of Forces um, part introduced as well. And then we had um, Thessalonians. We had Thessalonians in there as well. Um, how it was explaining that the, the wicked comes before as well as how um, um, the 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 tears are burnt first as well um, and all how um, the God of forces is just you know basically the reaper I mean it's all it's all right there you know it's just separating them you know in a sense um, because if we go back we can see that um, the guy was like shouldn't should we um, should we go uproot them and he was like, no, let me do it at the time appointed so that these specific ones can know, can know what is the energy to follow after they pass through the door of corruption. It's basically what it is. Um, and he didn't know that either. Like the guy who was asking that didn't know that either. He had to be guided to know. You know, I mean, the, the Bible is just so huge. It's such a humongous book. It's much bigger than this. It's like huge, man. There's just layers and layers and layers upon God's word that you can always go over and over and over. It's amazing. It's completely amazing. It just blows my mind. Like, we aren't going to be able to fathom while we are in these bodies how beautiful and awesome our, our salvation is going to be after we take off this corruption because that's what it was elaborating to as well was the, um, the wheat and the tares we're not going to know completely until you know our time has come is, is what it says and we have you know dwelt in the completed work that's already completed and then we will know and me learning to myself that asking and, and knocking and seeking uh, and that he will reveal it um is just it's proof enough for me to know that you know what I've asked for, the peace that I've asked for in my afterlife, you know, that, that it is real and that, you know, he's going to, he's going to take us there. That's what the Bible says. That's, that's prophecy. Um, yeah. It's cool stuff.